Hello and welcome. I'm Exit and this is my channel. Today I'm going to tell you a story, a true crime story, sent to me by one of the members of our community. I know that a lot of you, including myself, love these type of stories, so I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one because it has a little twist. I'd like to thank Mad Meerkat for entrusting me with his story and letting me read it. All right, let's go. This is the story of John Babacom Lee, the man they could not hang. Many years ago, the village of Babacom in Devon was a small place where people would move to in their retirement years. It was a very quiet place. Some would say dull. Nothing exciting seemed to ever happen here. This was where, in the year 1884, Emma Keese settled into her retirement home, not knowing that the peace of her golden years, to which she was eagerly looking forward to, would end in violence and murder. The home in which she lived was too large for the elderly lady to cope with on her own and a footman by the name of John Lee was employed to help with running of the house and to aid the elderly lady to manage her everyday living. It was not generally known until the murder trial that Lee, when he was a teenager, had stolen from Keys, was found guilty of theft, and served a term in prison. Keys, to the astonishment of her family and friends, said that she felt sorry for Lee and after he was released from prison, she was going to offer him a job. Six months later, she did just that, and Lee was offered employment as a footman. Years after this event, Keese surprised everyone by announcing that she was going to make plans to sell her property. This would seriously curtail the plans of Lee, and he lashed out at his frail elderly employer. He was extremely lucky not to be fired on the spot. However, as punishment, Lee's salary was significantly reduced. This enraged Lee, because on hearing the news, his fiancée called off their upcoming wedding as a result. Lee was heard by several people to say that he would have his revenge and lay the place to ashes. On November 15, 1884, authorities raced to Keyes' house, which was seen to be on fire. In the burnt and charred remains of the house, Keyes' body was found. She had suffered partial burns and was nearly decapitated. As Lee had recently been heard by several people to have threatened Miss Keyes, he was immediately arrested and charged with the elderly lady's murder. During his trial at Exeter Crown Court, Lee was said to have acted in a calm and serene manner, explaining that God knows that I am innocent of the charge, and I trust in the judgment of the Lord. When the jury returned from their deliberations, Lee was found guilty of willful murder. He stood in the dock and calmly faced the judge. The black cap was placed on his lordship's head, and the judge spoke these words. John Lee, you have been found guilty of the crime of murder. It is a sentence of this court that you be taken from here to a lawful prison, and from there to a place of execution where you will be hanged by the neck until you are dead and your body then buried within the precincts of the prison in which you shall be last confined. And may the Lord have mercy on your soul. There was a muffled response of Amen, heard from within the court. Lee was then taken down. Then, on February 23, 1885, Lee stood on the gallows at Exeter Prison, where the hangman's noose was placed around his neck by James Barry, the official executioner. During his trial, Lee was heard to say, I shall not hang. 
I am innocent and place my soul and my life in the hands of the Lord. The executioner had previously tested the trap door with a weighted sandbag. Everything was seen to work perfectly. The trap door lever was pulled and the sandbag disappeared from view and was jerked to a standstill by the noose placed around it. The trap door was reset and everything was ready. On that fateful morning, Barry entered the condemned man's cell, and Lee's arms were pinioned behind his back. He was led to the gallows, where the first hood was placed over his head, and then the noose around his neck. Barry pulled the lever. Nothing happened. The trap door failed to open. Lee was removed from the gallows. The lever was again pulled and the trapdoor worked perfectly. The mechanism was reset and Lee placed on the gallows. The noose and hood were again replaced on Lee and, for a second time, the lever was pulled. Again, the trap refused to open. Lee was again removed. The trap was tested and worked perfectly. For a third time, the prisoner was placed on the trap, the lever was pulled, and to everyone's shock and astonishment, the trap refused to open. After the third failed attempt, prison officials deemed it unlawful to try for a fourth time. Many of the witnesses were heard to say that they had seen an act of divine intervention. The prisoner was then removed to his cell, and his fate was placed in the hands of the then home security, Lord Sir William Harcourt. He decided that the sentence of death would be commuted to life imprisonment, with a recommendation that Lee never be released. But due to public pressure, John Babcom Lee was released from prison, having served a sentence of 22 years. He then capitalized on the events by releasing his autobiography in 1911. Lee disappeared from England, abandoning his wife and two young daughters. He moved to America where he started a new family. John Lee died of natural causes in 1945. It has been over 100 years since Emma Keese was brutally murdered. Was Lee guilty of murder? And why did the trap refuse to open and send him to his death? Was it a case of divine intervention or faulty execution equipment? You decide. Hi everyone, make sure to subscribe to Exit Life and give this video a big thumbs up. And don't forget to share with all of your friends.